Hello and welcome everyone. I hope everyone is doing well. Today I'm going to give you the ultimate guide on getting into arcade sticks. Some of the most popular questions that I get are, what is the best arcade sticks for beginner? I want to get into arcade sticks, but I don't know where to start. And what should I get as my first arcade sticks? These are all great questions and I will be answering them all and more. Especially with so many fighting games coming out, Guilty Gear Strive just released recently, followed by Melty Blood in September, followed by King of Fighters 15 in first quarter of 2022. And we are near the end of Street Fighter 5 and Tekken 7. So Street Fighter 6 and Tekken 8 is not too far away. And also a big title in the making is Project L, which is the League of Legends fighting game. So the fighting game industry is in a very good place right now. With so many amazing games coming out and local tournaments are starting to open back up, it is a great time to get into arcade sticks. It is a good time to learn, practice, train. So when the games come out, you are ready. So in this video, we will take a look at three of my favorite budget-friendly arcade sticks. I will compare them and give you the pros and cons. Uh, keep in mind, these are my personal opinions and advice. Depending on who you ask, you will get different answers. Now let's begin. Okay, in front of me, I have three budget-friendly entry-level arcade sticks. The Kwamba Drone, the a bit do and the Mayflash F300. So if you're looking for a stick for your PlayStation 3, PlayStation 4, PlayStation 5, and PC, you can't go wrong with the Kwamba Drone. This is a good size, compact arcade stick with a black and yellow honeycomb artwork design. It looks beautiful. And this is officially licensed by Sony, so you're not gonna have any issues. You can just plug it in. You don't have to install or plug in anything extra. This arcade stick is around $80. Next, we have the a bit Do. If you're looking for a stick for Nintendo Switch, for your PC Raspberry Pi, you can't go wrong with this arcade stick. I feel the company went way above beyond in terms of features and design. And this arcade stick is retail at about $89. Third one, if you're looking for a universal arcade stick that will pretty much work with anything, uh, Xbox 360, Xbox One, Xbox Series X and S, PlayStation 3, PlayStation 4, PlayStation 5, Android, Nintendo Switch, PC, there's a lot more. This will work. If you're looking for a good family uh, arcade stick, you know, for your beat em up, shoot em up, retro arcade games, this is going to be your best friend and it's only at about 65. Now, let's quickly talk about some of the pros, advantages, and features that each arcade stick offers. Starting with the Kwamba Drone. The Kwama Drone has this opening on the bottom that the other two does not. So you can put in a flathead screwdriver and it will give you access to switching the ball top into a bat top or any other handle that you have. Another feature the Kwama Drone has over the other two is it has cable management. So when you finish with uh, using your case stick, you can just put it back in here. So when you're carrying this on the go, it looks very clean, right? You don't have your cable everywhere. So those are the two benefits that this one has over the other two. The uh, ABIT2 has a few features that the other two does not. One is a uh, detachable cable. Uh, this is a very good feature that you don't really see on an entry-level arcade stick. In the event if your cable breaks, you can easily just buy a USB-A to a USB-C cable and you're good to go. Right? But if the cable on these guys breaks, it's going to be much tougher to replace them. Another feature is you have macro buttons. Uh, this, this has macro features, the other two does not. Macro feature lets you uh, add shortcuts to certain buttons. So you can make this button like a one button super, one button uppercut, one button spin kick and things like that. You can also use macro in training mode to test certain combos and test certain situations so it can be very useful. And a third feature for, for the APIT Do is wireless. You can use this arcade stick uh, with Bluetooth or 2.4G and also you don't see wireless connections that much on entry level arcade sticks. So, and also you also have LED lighting, right? That's another uh, feature that this has, the other one does not. So this one has quite a few mid-range arcade stick features on here for a very good price. The third one we have is the Mayflash. The Mayflash in terms of uh, pros and 
features and advantages, I would say it is the, the bigger size casing. In this arcade stick, you're, you can almost put in any lever, uh, any, any parts. It's going to fit because it has a big and tall casing. And also another advantage is probably going to be the universal feature. You can pretty much use this for any console. Aside from that, they're very similar. Now let's talk about the cons and the disadvantage of each arcade stick. But before I go into them individually, I want to say that all three arcade sticks will require a adapter cable if you want to connect it to any other uh, lever. Okay, there is no easy plug and play into a Sawa or any other lever. An extra cable will be required or any other way will be required. Okay, and also uh, all the buttons are basic buttons, basic levers, all the parts are very basic, no brand, unknown brands. Um, one is not better than the other, they all feel similar, uh, they all feel the same, okay? So now, starting with the Kwama Drone. The Kwama Drone, one of the disadvantages of the Kwama Drone is because it has a very flat profile. You will only be able to fit a Sanwa or something similar inside, okay? You can't put in a Hayabusa lever, you can't put in a Semisu lever because these are very big profile, much bigger profile, all right? And with Korean levers, officially, you can't put in a Korean lever, but there is an exception. If you drop this inside, it will not fit properly. You will have to bend the, uh, the connectors or you may have to shave some plastics off depending how you want to do it, but officially, Take it as a no, okay? Moving on to the APID 2 I feel like this one has an even slimmer profile. It's so flat that you can only put in a Sama lever. All the other three, you can't put it in. It is very flat. Um, so if you're okay with just using Sama, this is a still a great, great choice. And for the Mayflash F300, even though it is universal, the one downside is that you will have to plug in an extra cable to a lot of consoles, for example, the Xbox 360, Xbox One, the newer Xbox series, the PlayStation 4, PlayStation 5, one side have to go into the controller, the other side will either go into an Xbox controller or a PlayStation controller. Uh, so that will be one disadvantage of the Mayflash. So if you're going to your friend's house, you will have to bring extra things if they're going to be using uh, a controller if they don't have an extra one around. So, but if you don't mind that, this is still a great choice for entry level. That will be uh, a lot of fun for the family, for the kids. You know, it's great arcade stick all around. And also just keep in mind an entry level arcade stick doesn't mean that it is bad. It just means you get less in the beginning. In the, in the higher end arcade stick, you get more things like uh, you can get a detachable lever, a detachable cable, a braided cable, you get LED lighting, you get the easy access to the insides more like uh, aesthetics and convenience but doesn't mean that you can't get it on the entry level you just have to add them on yourself it's kind of like think of it like buying a, a base model or an entry level car you're not going to get the leather seats right you're not going to get the the nice wheels you're not going to get the moon roof the interior lighting the led lightings you may not get the remote engine start you may not get the backup camera, you not get, get the sensors when the car get by, right? You get the idea, but doesn't mean that you can't get, get those, right? You can install later on on the car, you can install the nice wheels, you can install the nice uh, sound system, you can get the backup cameras, right? It's just kind of the same idea, but you're just starting with what you actually need, right? Instead of the convenience and the aesthetics, right? They're both gonna get you from point A to point B. This part, I'm going to talk about some budget-friendly arcade sticks that are popular but not on my favorite list. Number one, the Hori Mini. The Hori Mini is a very small size, very lightweight arcade stick. The buttons, the button layout, the arcade stick casing is smaller than standard, smaller than normal. So you're going to have a hard time finding replacement parts. It is not mod friendly. You will have to do soldering. Uh, you're not going to have a good experience using this arcade stick. So don't buy this arcade stick. Number two, the Venom arcade stick. Similar to the Mayflash arcade sticks, this is another universal stick with similar structure and similar price points. I don't think there is support or firmware updates anymore for the Venom, so you might as well go with the Mayflash 
archaistic. Uh, Mayflash is more active. They make four archaistics. They make uh, converters. They make adapters. And they recently released a firmware for the PlayStation 5 and both of the Xbox series. So if you're looking for a budget universal sticks, I would recommend the Mayflash over the Venom. Number three, the PXN Arcade Stick. Similar to the Venom and the Mayflash, uh, this is another universal arcade stick with similar features and structures. But unlike the Mayflash and the Venom, this, uh, those two are mod friendly. The PXN is not. The PXN does not have standard wiring inside, so I don't recommend the PXN. Number four, the Mayflash F500. This is actually a very popular arcade stick and a very good value arcade stick. It's basically a bigger size F300 with a bigger body, longer body, and a heavier body. The reason it didn't make the favorites list is because if you do decide to mod the F500, the price gets too, too close to the mid-range arcade sticks. So it gets to, you get into a position where should I buy the F500 and mod it? Or should I just buy a mid-range arcade sticks to begin with, with Sawa parts and or other parts? And there's so many choices. So it kind of gets into a whole different discussion. So, but if you are looking for a big size arcade stick, budget friendly, uh, the F500 is a very good choice. Number five, the Mad Cats Alpha Fight Sticks. Similar to the Hori Mini, uh, this is another small size fight sticks. But unlike the Mini that doesn't support standard size, you will be able to replace the Mad Cats Alpha with standard parts, buttons, and things like that. But it is not mod friendly. It will require you some work. It is not as easy as the three that I recommend. Mad Cats Alpha is way overpriced for what it offers. So don't buy this arcade stick. And number six, we have the Power A Fusion Arcade Sticks. This is actually a new arcade stick that came out a few months back. One of the reason that it didn't make the favorites list is because of the price. It is retail at 129. Uh, I know it's always on sale, but I still have to say the official retail price. Um, I think it's overpriced for an entry level arcade stick. And even if this is on sale, I would still choose the 8-bit do arcade stick over this one. I will give you a full review very soon on this arcade stick. This part, I'm going to go over some common questions and answers. Number one, I am a hitbox player. I am a keyboard player. I am a pad player. I don't know if I want to switch over to a stick. Is a stick difficult to use? In my opinion, all controllers are hard to use. A stick player is going to find a pad difficult. A pad player is going to find a stick difficult. You are always more comfortable with the controller you started with because you're used to it. It is never easy uh, to learn a new tool, to pick up a new tool. It is going to take some time, but once you get used to it, once your mus muscle memory gets used to it, it's going to become second nature. You're going to have a lot of fun. It's kind of like uh, learning a new sport or learning how to drive. Right? Once you get used to it, it becomes very easy. Uh, I'm going to have a lot of videos to help you out. Should I custom build my first arcade stick? Is it cheaper and better? If you're new or first getting into arcade sticks and fighting game, I usually don't recommend custom building your own arcade sticks. Some players may assume uh, building an arcade stick is similar to building a PC. It is not the case of arcade sticks. In my opinion, it is about the same price or more expensive with arcade sticks. Technically, it can be cheaper if you're thinking about $20 to $30 arcade sticks that you find on eBay or like AliExpress, but you're not gonna have a good experience with them. What I mean when I talk about custom stick, uh, I'm talking about like a solid arcade stick with like reasonable parts. Um, for example, a Brooks PS4 PCB board is gonna run you about 50 bucks. A universal board is gonna run you about 95. If, if you are buying a Sawa, a Sawa lever, about 25 bucks, the buttons is gonna run you about 15. So those alone, you're already looking at about 100 to 150 with tax and shipping, and that's alone. Not including artwork, not including your casing, your cables, and anything else. So it can get pretty expensive. So that's why I don't recommend uh, custom building in the beginning. Wait until you're more familiar with more parts so you know exactly what you want. Um, 
in the event if you don't use it right you didn't spend too much money on it what is the best arcade stick this is probably the biggest question in short there is no best arcade stick it is all situational and personal preference it is more about what parts fits you more what parts fits your play style what games you play what parts makes you play better because at the end of the day all the arcade stick out there can result in the same parts all the arcade sticks here can result in the same parts right there is so many parts out there for you to try and experiment uh, if you're talking about lever there's Japanese lever there's different models there's Korean lever a lot of models there's European levers American levers within the lever there's the spring you want a heavier spring or lighter spring you want a bigger actuator or smaller actuator uh, there is the restrictor gate some people place better on a square gate some people place better on a circular gate octagon gate um, you want a longer shaft shorter shaft uh, what else there's digital levers now and keep and the the buttons now they support keyboard keyboard uh, switches and there's so many there's cherry mx switches there's chair uh, there's razor switches there's so many different parts and so many customization you can do with your arcade stick now um endless and the technologies keep growing and there's just constantly more products and more parts coming out and this is what my channel is about to help you familiarize with different parts to help you uh, get better and eventually help you uh, customize your perfect arcade stick does using a more expensive arcade stick make you play better this is a tough question i would say yes and no yes like if the arcade stick is very comfortable to use you're more comfortable using it on your lap uh, your posture is very good and if the buttons are very responsive everything feels very smooth it will have a positive uh, effect on someone so they can perform a little bit better but there is just way too much factor that goes into fighting game like uh, game knowledge character knowledge uh, frame data inputs movements combos executions and experience those plays a very big part in fighting games and a good player is still going to perform very well on a less expensive stick you know not like a very cheap like 20 30 dollar stick maybe like a entry level stick they will still perform very good because they have the experience and they know what they're doing so even if someone buys a very expensive arcade stick it's not going to instantly make them a better player last question what is my favorite arcade stick and parts i don't really have a favorite arcade stick but i can tell you that uh, i use the hori wrap for the most this has been my go-to arcade stick for my all my games for the past few years and I, as you guys can see, I use this in almost all my videos uh, as demonstration. I've taken things in and out hundreds of times. I test everything with this. Uh, so this thing is built like a tank. Uh, my current parts that I'm using is for games with circular motion, like Street Fighter. I am using the Hori Hayabusa buttons with a Samwa lever. For games with uh, directional inputs, like Tekken, I am using hori hayabusa buttons with the korean lever the knee lever um, so that is my current setup and i'm still testing a lot of stuff at home that i haven't had a chance to make a video about i have a lot of uh, game of fingers buttons and cherry mx switches and razor switches i want to test so down the road i will have those videos for you guys in conclusion i hope this video was able to help you out hopefully it will steer you in the right directions and get you started if i miss anything if you have any more questions uh, ask me in the comments below i'm always here to help uh, like comment subscribe is always helpful for a small channel thank you guys so much for watching and i'll see you guys on the next video